All right. So in the previous class, we learned the importance of uh, VXLAN. We learned that there are a lot of expectations in modern data center. We saw one by one those expectations and we discussed that to fulfill those expectations, the to fulfill those expectations, the technology needs to grow. And we saw how the technology grown up to today from STP to VXLAN. And also we ended the class by understanding all those important features of VXLAN, the size of the header, that page I think I have to repeat once again because that is very important. All right, so let me explain that last page of the previous class to you, which is very, very important than <clears throat> the before one. The before one was generally explaining the demand of VXLAN, need of VXLAN. At last I finished by explaining you the overview of VXLAN. VXLAN stands for Virtual Extendable Local Area Network. Now, we, we know that the VLAN, which is also a local area network, a virtual local area network, has got some limitation. For a large data center, uh, you need multiple tenants, which is not possible to give because we have only 4,096. VLANs. For that number, one customer itself is consume, uh, is uh, sometimes they consume that amount of VLANs. Not all, some big customers. So, David. Okay. Now, so just with the VLAN, we will not be able to have multiple tenants. You may have only one tenant. So, we need something uh, big. Those things we already spoke, like scalability, mobility, blah, blah. VXLAN does that. VXLAN is layer two in layer three tunnel. Layer three tunnel is created using the UDP negotiation. <clears throat> layer three tunnel, overlay tunnel. Overlay means VPN, okay? Anything over the physical is VPN, overlay tunnel. You see, this is a layer three overlay tunnel. It, what does it mean? It means that the tunnel is built with a successful negotiation of IP, not uh, something else, <clears throat> it's IP. But definitely IP depends on TCP or UDP. What does this VXLAN depends on? It depends on IP, UDP. And the dedicated port number is 4789. This port number is given, but not mandatory for you to strictly use this. Not necessary. Most of the people I have seen, they, they always change this port number. They feel like, you know, a kind of security there when we use different port number. On all our leaf, we need to put the same port number Instead of giving same 4789, which is well known to everyone, uh, they try to use some other number, which they remember. 
very well so that they the 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 <clears throat> the security see because this is well known port number there is a feeling like someone will use that number 4789 and try to confuse our vxlan fabric for that reason um, we see people using different port number and okay this is udp there is no session id there is no uh, uh, what to say there is no uh, protocol id memes no, there is protocol id there is no other identifier like what we see in tcp so it's of course udps are vulnerable that's the reason why they use different port number to negotiate vxlan and this is as per the rfc standard 7348 vxlan is per it's a standard based technology now vlan is only 12 bit vxlan is 16 bit bit right <laughs> 24 bit okay vlan is only 12 bit vxlan is not just a 16 bit or 18 bit it is 24 see from 12 bit if you move to 13 bit space it will double the amount of vlan numbers it will double this is not double this is many double 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 one bit if you add anything in binary if you see one bit when is it when it is added it doubles one bit when you decrease it makes half of the previous out put so it is not simply double don't think like okay it earlier it was 12 bit now it is 24 bit it is double no it is not double according to binary it is not doubled if you make 12 to 13 then it is you are doubling But when you make 12 to 24 uh, it's this again doubled this again doubled this again double oh, it will go big very big with 12 bit you are able to have only 4096 if it is doubled 4096 is doubled you will get what 8192 but this is not 8192 this is 16 million this many number of vnis we don't call it as vlan id or vxlan id we call it as vnis virtual network identifier <coughs> vni or vxlan network identifier also you can say vnis yeah so the next thing is you see we are going to use a layer 3 underlay to create this overlay i repeat to create this overlay tunnel using ip negotiation in order to transfer layer 2 packets the underlay should also be layer 3 we use a layer 3 underlay we put ip addresses on every link and uh, and we enable some routing protocols like ospf 
or uh, ISIS or uh, EIGRP, anything you like. There is no restriction when it comes to VXLAN eVPN. You can put any IGP protocol. Now, the advantage of using this IGP protocol, routing protocol is, you don't go for static route. Advantage of giving a routing protocol is, whenever it finds ECMP, whenever it finds equal cost path, it can do ECMP. Whenever it finds equal cost paths, it will do equal cost multipathing. So, if someone wants to go from A to C here, they have two paths to reach like this and like this because if you see here also it is two hop here also it is two hop two hop anywhere to anywhere is two hop so the the advantage of having gloss architecture means leaf and spine architecture the advantage of having a layer 3 underlay is seen here if you don't have layer 3 underlay then your network will be subjected to STP. There will be a lot of blockings. You see, because you got layer three underlay, there is no blocking anywhere. You are, you, you are able to use, you are now using all available paths. So you are getting layer three advantage in layer two. The advantage of layer 3 is no blocking anywhere. But in layer 2, we used to see block because of STP, wherever the redundant path, STP comes and blocks. We used to see that. We used to see that blocking. But now, because I am having layer 3 underlay to transport layer 2 over the layer 3 tunnel, I get the advantage of ECMP for layer two. So what I want to say in short is VXLAN can do layer two multipathing. Layer two multipathing. And because it uses layer three ECMP over this gloss architecture or the leaf and spine architecture, the, the spanning tree to prevent loop is not needed. Do anyone have got any question? I heard some mic sound. You want your mic? No questions? Okay. Now, the other advantage, very big advantage is you are going to have a tunnel between the leaves. Now when A communicates to C, when A communicates to C, the source MAC address, let's say AAA, and the destination MAC address CCC, remains unchanged till it reaches here. We just saw that there is a layer 3 here. Layer 3. Layer 3, but what tunnel you have is layer 2. We saw that on the top. Layer 2 transporting layer 3 tunnel. It's a layer, tunnel is made up of layer 3 using IP negotiation, UDP IP negotiation. But it is ready to transport what? Layer 2. That's. So no routing. There is no routing for this uh, A to C packet. Let's say the IP address is 10.0.0.1 here, 10.0.0.2 here. So the source IP will be 10.0.0.1 and destination will be 10.0.0.2. This remains same, no change in this. But when it goes to this place, 
the VXLAN is going to encapsulate it. It's going to encapsulate it, meaning VXLAN covers this and adds another layer two source, layer three, two destination, layer three source, layer three destination. For example, if the VTAP address is 1.1.1.1 and this VTAP address is 3.3.3.3, .3 what is VTAP address? Virtual tunnel endpoint address. That's the address to identify the endpoints, the leaf. So that becomes the source here. <coughs> now, using this only the the packet is going to be moved from leaf one to leaf three. It's by using this, and the MAC address is going to be leaf one's MAC address and Lee is spine one and spine two MAC address, ECMP. One packet will have spine one MAC address, another packet will have spine two MAC address. So the MAC, this MAC address only keeps changing for every hop. The original MAC address and IP address never changes. They are, they are unchanged. They are maintained unchanged. This is very important for emotion. Layer two adjacent should not get broken, should not break for uh, many data center concepts. One of the concepts that, that, that insists on that is vMotion. Sir, In sir, VMware. Yes. Sir, uh, here the map. I'm sorry, I didn't get you. Uh, uh, you told about the MAC address, right? Uh, the source MAC address, layer 3 so source MAC address and the layer 2, uh, sorry, layer 3 uh, destination MAC address. So the MAC address will be uh, mm -hmm. the port's MAC address of the leaf, uh, right sir? Repeating. I am going to repeat again. I did not say layer 3 MAC address. There is nothing called layer 3 MAC address. Layer 2 MAC address. I said ah, yeah, layer, layer two, yes. two MAC address yeah, yeah. of this device. The switch itself is identified with one MAC address. Oh, okay. Not the port. The switch has got a MAC address. Okay, sir. And every, you know, you might have done in STP, you see one bridge ID, one MAC address for the entire switch when you type show spanning tree. Yeah. Likewise. To identify a switch, there will be one MAC address. Okay. Okay. That is what going to be used. If you use physical interface MAC addresses, what will happen is loop will occur. That's not good. For this one IP address, there should be only one MAC address. If you say two MAC address, then problem. Yep. Yeah, so. Uh, it's the Schutz MAC address. Next. The other advantage of VXLAN, which we already discussed, is the multi tenants. Multi tenants. You can have multi tenants. You, you can have separate, separate customer uh, traffics over the shared underlay fabric. Now, though the, the physical fabric is only one uh, with how many devices, uh, like um, six devices. You see six devices and, uh, and some cables. But you can provide the six devices to six customers. So it will be like 36 devices. You can share this underlay. That is what multi-tenancy. 
multi tenancy separation of customer traffic over shared underlay fabric not only that for each customer you can now provide 4096 vlans because each tunnel each tenant is totally isolated from one another <coughs> so you can have same vlans for different tenant that is what i want to say you can have same vlans on different tenants right and uh, by using that physical underlay the shared underlay we have a virtual workloads for each customer separate at last we saw one point the last point the two flavors of vxlan two flavors of vxlan one is flood and learn the other one is vx evpn using bgp bgp's evpn right so we had two methods flood and learn uh, another one flood and learn uses mac address to flood so flood it's not like broadcast again it is within that customer it is flooding it is within the customer when you have multiple tenants it's within that vrf within that custom not uh, beyond the boundaries so don't think it is uh, flooding means broadcasting it knows to whom it needs to broadcast meaning there is a group identified using mac address within that it broadcasts so you cannot call it as a broadcasting broadcast is for the entire fabric even those other customers in different considered as another tenant also should get that is broadcast but here it is broadcasting within the customer's boundary how do you know the boundary multicast helps to know the boundary <clears throat> flooding and learning method the other one is bgp's evpn evpn works as a control plane ethernet vpn evpn it's one of the bgp's feature that's why we call bgp as mp bgp so using the mp bgp vxlan evpn we will know whom to deliver how if you have done layer 3 vpn and pls vpn how you how one pe knows where to deliver the route updates to other pe which pe should receive is determined using route target which is been carried as bgp's extended community attribute exactly the same thing you are going to see here but in layer 3 vpn bgp vpn the layer 3 address next hop autonomous system were carried as community attribute as bgp update whereas here it is going to be which leaf what mac address what ip address what vlan what vni all those infos so you can avoid flooding only when you when you have bump traffic the the flooding is going to be seen flooding will be seen 
in in bgp vpn only for broadcast unknown unicast and multicast traffics the flooding will be seen for known traffic there is no more flooding no flood whereas in the first flavor flooding and learning always flooding right this is where we stopped in the previous class now vxlearn terminologies that we should know uh, let me quickly draw the diagram I need this picture to be used many times, so let me draw it nicely and take a copy. Right. So this is a template. Now, this one, <clears throat> as we already discussed, this one, uh, this one, what we have here inside is an IP underlay network. called as underlay. And to provide reachability between leaf and spine, we use one IGMP, sorry, uh, uh, interior gateway protocol IGP. And then we enable multicasting and we enable BGP in order to have EVPN. So these are all there in the underlay. When you configure, you know, if you bring this picture in your mind, then you will know why you are putting those commands. So when you say multicasting, then definitely those spines need to be a rendezvous point. Uh, so you can have any cast a rendezvous point or a or BSR. When we go there, I'll explain you more detail. Secondly, these leaves need to be identified and spine need to be uh, just a, a routing device, I repeat. Leaves need to be identified as a tunnel in point. Spines are simply a routing device. Even if the spines don't support VXLAN, that doesn't matter. All that they need to support is these three protocols, IGMP, PIM, and BGP. They no need to, the blue boxes no need to support VXLAN. Only these, these orange boxes need to support VXLAN. So for, uh, for orange boxes to be identified, there is a need for an address, we call it as VTAP address. Virtual tunnel endpoint address. And there will be a virtual interface for for any tunnel, you see, any tunnel technology. Take crypto, IP set. You have a crypto map. What it is, it's a virtual interface where ISA, KMP gets enabled. And if you take GRE, you create IP, 
sorry, interface tunnel zero or interface tunnel one, you create one tunnel interface. So for any tunnel concept, there is a need for a virtual interface, a tunnel interface. Even if you take VLAN, layer three VLAN interface, it's a tunnel, it's a virtual interface, SVI. It's a, it's a virtual interface. For any encapsulation concepts, there is need for an interface. Now that interface is called as Network Virtualization Edge, NVE. NVE is a tunnel interface here, Network Virtualization Edge. Network Virtualization Edge. So on all the leaves, you should have a network virtualization edge. We should have a unique VTAP address on every leaf. And these interface, let's say Ethernet 1 slash 1, Ethernet 1 slash 2. These interface that are towards the spine, they're all layer three. But this one below here, Ethernet one slash three, is a layer two. STP subjected. If you have written a link here, they are subject to the STP, the down links. Layer two, it can be a access port or it can be a trunk. Right, so uh, you can have some host here, uh, host one, and you may have another host here. Uh, this may be, again, access VLAN 10. This also access VLAN 10 connect uh, a and, uh, hypervisor also sir uh, vmware kind of such a trunk port yeah in that case you will have a trunk port here trunk port so because you have a vds virtual distribution switch, we will have many VMs and each VM may be a member of a different VLAN, VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30. So, uh, you got a trunk there on the top. You see, so we got different uh, environment like VM environment, you have trunk, or you may also have a physical switch, a catalyst switch, to which uh, some computers are physically connected. This is VLAN 10 member, this is VLAN 20 member. Yes, this VLAN is the 30. setup my, my, before I was working at uh, one of the organizations. They have it like this. Yeah, with a 9 k Hmm, okay. Yeah. This one. All, uh, all this the ideas they have the catalyst. PDS. Both. Okay, okay. So they, they took the existing topology, they connected to the ACA fabric. Yeah. Sorry, VXM fabric. Mm. That's how they migrated. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do we learn here is we learn a terminology called VXLAN Tunnel Endpoint or VTAP, NVE, Network Virtualization Edge. And uh, and the other things are like, you know, uh, configuration oriented, like we need to have IGP, we need to have PIM, we need to have BGP. All right. So, so uh, could you once more explain uh, the NVE? Network virtualization edge. 
is the is the interface that you create via which the traffic will enter the tunnel. Network virtualization edge itself is the tunnel actually. You see, this is a layer three. These wires are layer three, you know it. These wires are layer three. But you are expecting what? A layer two transport. Where is the interface for that layer two transport? This underlay is fully layer three. So you need a wire to, to accommodate, to welcome layer two packets. Layer two packets are coming in. But where is the wire to accommodate it, to, to, to accommodate and take it to the other leaf? Where is the wire? You don't have the wire. That wire is what we create and we, we attach it to the tunnel that you negotiated using UDP. That interface, the tunnel endpoint, this, this tunnel endpoint, don't focus on the layer three. With the layer three, you already negotiated and you got a layer two tunnel. Now, for the layer two, there is need for an interface to accommodate layer two encapsulation. You need a, you need a, see, if you have a switch, can you give IP address to the interface? No. Unless you say, no switch port, you are not able to give an IP address to the switch interface. What does that mean? It means that you are converting into a layer three port to, layer, to accommodate layer three. Likewise, You need NVE to accommodate layer two frames on this layer three environment. So we create a virtual interface. I want to give you another example. When you did GRE, why you did interface tunnel zero? And in, and in the interface tunnel zero, what you are mapping? You are mapping the physical layer three interface. Why did you create a tunnel interface? Because you need to do encapsulation. Whatever comes from the customer, I'm not just going to root like that. I'm going to encapsulate it with another layer three and layer two header. So whenever there is an encapsulation, there is going to be a tunnel interface. And the tunnel interface here named as NVE, Network Virtualization Edge Interface. So it is from the Network Virtualization Edge, the traffic enters the tunnel, goes to the other place. The traffic enters the tunnel and goes to the other. So this is one NVE. This is one NVE. You may create more than one NVE, but you can also manage with only one. Some version of Nexus, they don't support more than one. Some supports many. Okay, sir. When we go out to configuration side, we will see. So NVE is nothing but a virtual interface. Like we used to have SVI, interface VLAN 10 in layer two switch like we have tunnel zero, like we have crypto map, crypto interface, virtual interface for IPsec. This is another tunnel. Uh, yes, sir. So I, I, that NV is clear for you? Uh, sir, I would like to uh, leave now. Okay. So there is another uh, thing that I forgot to say here in the previous pages, I was talking about VNID, Virtual Network Identifier, VNID, where it is. Okay, what I want to say is VNID or Virtual Network Identifier or VXLAN Identifier, uh, some people will write as like, you know, uh, VNI, 
or some people also like uh, write it as v n i d both are same both means vxlan network identifier so this vxlan network identifier is different from nve understand nve is the tunnel interface nve is the network virtualization edge inside nve you may have many vni more than one each one is different traffic okay i want to remind you something in layer 3 bgp mp bgp vpn how many tunnels you you negotiated between pe between two pe how many tunnels you negotiated only one yes or no between two pe's in layer 3 mp bgp how many tunnels we negotiated how many neighbor address family vpn v4 how many neighbor you activated if it is only two pe how many neighbor only one but you might be connected to more than one customer on each pe isn't it yes. now each customer needs a separate identifier right that's why you have route distinguisher and route target to differentiate the traffic inside the tunnel likewise to differentiate vlan 10 traffic from vlan 20 traffic and vlan 30 traffic you need different id even though it is going through one tunnel even though it is going through this this one tunnel this three are not same traffic this is vlan 10 that is vlan 20 it may be same customer it may be same tenant but they are not of one broadcast domain so you can put them in different it's an optional one again if you want to mix it and send it you can mix it and send but if you want to say no i want to provide different number for vlan 10 okay for all vlan 10 traffic i will give uh, 1010 for all vlan 20 i'll give vni 1020 for vlan 30 i'll give 1030 this is what called as vnis these vnis are configured under nve nve is a tunnel interface inside which vnis are configured so if you keep these things in your mind your configuration will be simple you will not uh, feel challenge when you configure you won't feel difficult when you configure uh, vxlan any question so far we have to create this uh, vn id is for each vlan optional okay. yeah but again i'm saying it's an optional one if you want yes all right So 